Great to have you back uh, here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now let's begin our first major conversation for today. Um, and of course, it's going to be talking about a, a review of uh, Nigeria's current ministers being done by President uh, Muhammadu Buhari. We're speaking this morning with Opunabo Inkotara, a former spokesman and a media aide for the Rivers State Government. Good morning, Mr. Inkotaria. Good morning. Great to have you join us this morning. It's uh, very interesting times, you know, every time that we have to do a review of uh, the performance of the pr persons who have been put in these positions, the head MDAs and, of course, you know, head, you know, certain government agencies across the country. Um, and, you know, I remember also that there was a huge clamor uh, by Nigerians when, uh, you know, there was, um, you know, uh, people asking that the president replaces security heads at some point. He eventually did it after about two years of you know, continuous clamor. Um, but I want you to share your thoughts on the president's assessment or what you think his assessment is of the people that he put in power or he appointed to head these agencies. Well, I think his assessment is um, poor and planned on sentence, not really on performance. Uh, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay. Not really on performance, because if you ask me, not more than two ministers, or max three, uh, ministers are actually performing creditably. The rest are just still in office for one reason or the other, mostly sentimental, with not as a result of their performance. So if you ask me, for example, they call it a retreat, it's okay, it's quite normal. Uh, governments, both at state and federal levels, go on retreats, principally for appraisal to assess their performances in office. But you see, those retreats are just to me a mere jumble. The retreat will only make sense when they are there to learn. When you invite experts to test them, one or two things, I mean, uh, uh, not necessarily to assess their performances in office. Because if you talk of assessment of performance in office, this is what should be done on a daily basis, not quarterly, not weekly, not monthly, but on a daily basis. These ministers report to Mr. President on a daily basis. So, yeah, are you going to tell that uh, you turn a blind eye on you when you have a retreat? It doesn't really make sense. So it's just another jumble. But if you talk of a retreat to further lecture this public officers on how to maximize, how to get uh, maximum performance, then I will agree with you because uh, we learn till the day we get to our grave, till the day we die. But to tell me that the retreat is specifically to assess the performance, carry out an appraisal of the, uh, 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 the ministers and the, their performances in office, uh, to me it's just a mere jamboree. I, I'm not really interested in that. Okay, uh, let's start with the Ministry of Works and Housing under the leadership of Babatunde Fashola. How well do you think the ministry had fared in the area of federal government housing schemes to public servant? Fashola is one minister that has performed, notwithstanding the hiccups, notwithstanding the uh, bureaucratic impediments. Fashola, no doubt, has performed. The minister for... Um, I mean, she has also performed, talking of the railways precisely, he has also performed. But uh, that's why I said not more than three ministers. If we talk of the defense, it's an abysmal failure. If we talk of the health, of course the health minister is just their one um, egocentric, one megalomaniac. That's the way I dismiss that health minister. He's probably the worst health minister in the history of this country. Uh, full of high blood pressure, deceptive rhetoric, and a number of concrete performance. Same applies to the Minister for Labor, Dr. Ndige, who is a disgrace in office. So if you ask me, a lot of them ought not to be there. As for Malami, Malami should be desired. Malami is a disgrace to the legal profession. So who are we going to talk about? I mean, a lot of them. Tell me additional, oh, what, what are you doing, my friend? You're just keep, you're reminding me of this character. Who are you showing me uh, that uh, special assistant to this? Well, I don't even refer to those words. Those are just misplaced characters. 
So a lot of them, I must tell you the truth, have performed abysmally. A whole lot of them. That's why I said you, the credit can be given to not more than three ministers, not more than three ministers. And if the public will assess, then why won't Mr. President assess? Or are we talking of the Boko Haram minister, the Pantani himself? So who are we going to refer to? We just have not more than three ministers in this government that are actually performing. The rest have no business being in court. They are only there to feather their pocket and also boost their ego. That's all. Well, Ms. Inkotari, you, you made mention of um, um, Fashola and, uh, of course, uh, Rotimi Amechi, um, uh, both, of course, uh, ministers. And, of course, you said that these are some of the people that you would say have performed. Um, but I want you to speak with regards, you know, what standards we, with which we rate performance of uh, ministers across Nigeria. Um, are there standards? Are there, you know, certain things that, you, you know, we should be able to look yeah, at? It's simple. As a minister, you expect it. Of course, the boss stops at Mr. President's table. Yes. You can have the best of ideas. You can have the best of brains. And so on. You can ideate issues. But if Mr. President says no, he has to anoint them for them to manifest. No doubt about that. Uh, but when you talk of performance, you are looking at, it's, it's evidentially proof. For example, you talk of financial law, we can see that notwithstanding the uh, poor budget allocation, because when you talk of uh, budget money budgeted to a particular ministry, we are not just talking of uh, the announcement, the pronouncement, we are talking of the release of the funds. So if you talk of um, federal, federal houses, federal roads and so on, as deplorable as they are, well, I think Pasha Allah has really tried because of uh, starting information that I am privy to. I think he has really tried, given the resources at his disposal. Then if we talk of the, the transport, of course, we all know. I mean, uh, nobody will have to convince you or say that you're a woman. We can see what the railways, the railways bringing up in every nook and cranny. And so on. even though there are delays here and there, I refer to those delays as dilatoriness. They are, they are deliberate. So not not on the part of the executive, not necessarily. In most times, on the uh, the fault is from the legislative arm. Will I say legislative arm? I'm very sorry to say that the fault is from the Ministry of Federal Lawmaking. That's what I refer to as the National Assembly to as Ministry of Federal Lawmaking. The lawmaking. So um, these are just the barometer, the yardsticks, and uh, that's why if you look at the health. The doctors are constantly on strike. Our health has known reduced from uh, the worst situation of just um, prescription centers to death centers. Then if you look at uh, labor, of course, you, uh, for every second we have workers going on strike and so on. So which ministry are you going to talk about? Which ministry are you going to talk about? I mentioned the barometer, the Yaktik, the Crystal Major Ministry. If you say... You're the agri minister for agriculture. What is happening to our rice? The rice they say we produce cannot even be eaten by those who produce the rice. It's a shame because of the quality. You agree with me. In talk of food production, the cost of food is astro has risen astronomically. We all agree that an exponential rise. So what is the minister of Agri minister of agriculture doing? Are you going to talk of um, the petroleum ministry? Of course, Mr. President himself is the Minister of Petroleum. Of course, we've seen what has happened with NNPC and the development thus far. And we've seen the rise in the uh, spike in uh, petroleum products, both petrol, diesel, PMS, diesel, and kerosene. Which other ministries? I know we have a lot of ministries. If you help me mention them, of course, I will tell you what the failures in those ministries. So I'm just giving you the, the barometer with which you can measure the failure or success of the ministry. Yeah, but, but, the but Mr. Ingotaria, and, and this is what I want yeah. you to clarify, is, is the standards and the barometer like you've mentioned, is it based on what it should be or based on what we've experienced in the past? And so we have finally seen something different and so we should you know, give a round of applause to these persons. And I'm, I'm focusing on these two you've mentioned now. We, of course, we'll get to the rest which you have said have failed. Um, the responsibility of the Minister of Transportation, of course, is for, you know, goods and persons across the country and, you know, be, being able to ease transport. And that's on the very basic level. 
And so are we going to, are you rating them based on what we've seen from previous ministers and how they've performed and how some of all these things have maybe, you know, been at um, snail uh, speed compared to what they're current, we're currently seeing now? Or you're rating it based on what you think um, a developing country should have um, as its performance standard for a ministry uh, of transportation? Well, I'm not building it. Uh, I'm not planting my assessment on um, antecedents. No, not at all. Not at all. But I'm, uh, my as, uh, uh, assessment is premised on what it ought to be, and given the prevailing circumstances. That's that's where I assess. Uh, so much, for example, look at the Ministry of uh, Transportation. We've gotten so much loan to a lot of people is living in the country part. So much loan. Uh, a lot of us, even, even as much as we see the railways springing up in every nook and cranny, a lot of us believe, a lot of Nigerians believe that even the rates are inflated and the loans are just too much, too much for just Nigeria and generations on board. So I'm not only really basing it on the antecedents or the, the past of uh, uh, former ministers and former governments. No, what it ought to be is what I'm saying. And that, that not, not based on what uh, their predecessors did, or um, uh, uh, talking of a, a developing society. No, but what it ought to be, given our resources and how much has been allocated or not allocated to these ministries, and what, what ought to have been allocated to the ministries that we are not allocated to the ministries, and uh, what the, the sums are allocated to the ministries, what have they done with it, how have the ministers been able to exhibit leadership qualities in their ministries. We are talking of, for example, the Minister for Labor, and we have been able to carry along the labor family, the labor industry along to prevent strikes and so on. That's that's what my analysis are based on, not necessarily on their predecessors or uh, what it is in civilized crime. I'm talking of what, given the resources, given the prevailing circumstances, what these ministers would have achieved within the prevailing circumstances. Okay, but you have actually commended uh, Baba Tunde Fashola, saying that uh, in your own rating that you think he's uh, actually performed very well. Let's also not forget that he controls, I mean, three... Look at the aviation ministry now. All the, all the aviation workers are going on strike. So are you going to say the aviation minister is performing? Okay. They've all resigned. Pilot and key aviation personnel have all resigned. So the aviation industry is endangered as we speak now. All right, let's still stay so with... These are the issues. Let's still stay with Baba Tunde Fashola. Like you have commended him, uh, you said that uh, in your own list of appraisals that you would rather say that he's done very, very well. And let's also not forget that he controls... I did not say very, very well. I say he's done well. Not okay, very, so very you say well. he's done well. Let's not forget that he controls uh, the power sector, he controls works and housing. Let's look at the power sector. Do you think that, uh, you know, there's any improvement? There has been any improvement in the power, power sector from 2015 up until this point. Do you think... Sorry? Do you think that there's been any improvement in, you know, the sectors that he controls from 2015 up until this moment? Well, talking of the power sector, he himself admitted, <laughs> he himself admitted failure in that sector, and which he attributed to uh, a cabal. And you will all agree with me that uh, he tried the much he could but the bottlenecks were beyond his control. And that past sector, for the past sector to actually work, Mr. President must be sincere and must be prepared to ensure that the past sector works. You have a cabal that is frustrating, a cabal that is hamstringing efforts of any minister. And it depends on Mr. You see, it, 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 it's, a, it's a convoluted system. And if I have really had to go into the power sector, it will take me two days to explain the power sector with the information at my disposal. But is he actually the Minister for Power now? We're talking about 215. The from, from the time he was up until, no, yeah, you know, no, his... Yes, that, that, that's what I'm saying. And because he failed in that aspect, that ministry was taken away from him. So we are talking of the retreat of now, not the retreat of 2015 or 2014, or 2016, rather. 
We are talking about the retreat of now. He failed in the power sector. No doubt about that. And he has also admitted that much. Nigerians have all, uh, will also agree that he failed in the power sector. But we are talking about the retreat of now. That's what we're well, Sa to. Saleh, my we're man. We're talking um, about the retreat of 2016. Sorry? Uh, I was just Sorry? going to clarify, you know, Saleh Maman is currently the Minister of Power. Um, and of course, he will be as That's what I'm saying. That's um, what I'm saying. Yeah. We are talking of retreat of now, not retreat of 2016 yeah. or 2017. Uh, uh, now, yeah. let, let, now, let's talk about some of the things that you've, you know, somehow, some way mentioned. And those are the stumbling blocks you know, that may have prevented some of these persons from performing. Um, and I'm going to, you know, spread this across all, you know, available ministries um, in, in the country today and some of the people that will be assessed in this retreat. Um, would you say that there are certain reasons why they may have not been able to perform to the best of their abilities? Well, I think principally it has to do with the principle that Mr. President himself, because um, the leadership determines the full worship to a large extent. You know, you have a president that is, uh, how would I put it, complacent. He, he, he doesn't care. What he's just interested in is he has a few loyalists, the official bills that will come to him, tell him what they think should be done, rightly or wrongly, and because he has so much confidence in them, and he does it and he's satisfied to hell with any other character. And so he doesn't really give a penetrating talk to the issues what the various ministers are doing in their various ministries or what Nigerians are saying, just like the uh, Section 52 of the letter that has been amended. Senate responded to the yearning, to the cries of Nigerians, and they went ahead with the amendment. That is what we expect. But we have a president that is in favor to criticize it. So from now till tomorrow, that Minister A is not performing. In fact, that is when he will even fortify Minister A the more. We've seen it even in appointments and so on. And so as a result of this, most of these ministers believe that they're untouchable. And the only thing they do is ingratiate themselves with Mr. President and with the cabal. And once Mr. President and the cabal are okay, are comfortable with them, then they go to hell with any other individual. That is what is going on. And so they are not answerable to Nigeria. So even most of these ministers, you release their budget to them, most of them will use the money to turn online their pockets. Because they know that no amount of demonstration, no amount of uh, protestation, no amount of uh, criticism will remove them from office. In fact, the more you criticize the minister, the more Mr. President says you are attacking his government, you are the enemy of the government. So if Mr. President has just been killed as a result of is the president that don't want to a particular certain word. You know, so he has just been killed. And that is the bane of his government. He has so much confidence in ABC. And whatever APC says to him is final. Every other person can go to hell. You don't run a system like that. You don't run a system like that. But, and that is the bane of his government. He's impervious to criticism. And any government that is impervious to criticism is doomed to fail. Well, is it also dependent on, um, you know, what the president himself, and I, I want you to also speak on this, you know, what the president himself sees as development and, you know, how much truth he's also getting. Because they have Federal Exec Executive Council meetings every now and then. Now, now, now when, you say, when you say it depends on what he sees as development, as a president, you know, that you are the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria or of any country does not make you a master of all. That is why you bring in competent hands. You yes. ensure you have square pegs in square holes. That is the whole essence. I mean, we, a very good example was that of IDB at the federal level. In as much as I will not give 70% uh, uh, to IDB, but you could agree with me that he assembled the best hands when it comes to ministerial appointments. In River State, we had a situation like that under King Alfred J.T. Street, the, then, the first military governor of River State, 67 to uh, 75, you know. But and, and we saw the development in River State. It's on parallel to tomorrow. We are talking about since 1967 today. It's on parallel. I can tell you that. So we are talking about the best time. At that time, Jesus, we didn't go to university. <laughs> he was just another officer. But he did well. So we are not saying you have to be a master of all. 
but you must also be ready and open to criticisms and advice. That is what it's all about. That is what leadership is all about. And that is what is lacking in this present administration. When you have, uh, 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 will I permit me to use this one, Nikon Poops around, who are there not necessarily in the interest of the masses, but they are there principally because first they believe it is their right, that then we are the ones that ensure the emergence of Buhari as Mr. President. Therefore, it is their turn to enjoy. And that is where they see. So they go there, and what they do is tell Mr. President, you have what you call the cognitive dissonance theory. You tell Mr. President what he wants to hear, and because that is what he wants to hear, that is what he does. But if he's a president that is open to criticism, he's going to listen to the media, and will get the feedback from the masses, which is which, which is going to be independent of the feed of what these uh, lieutenants are telling him. And that is the only way. <laughs> Excuse me. That is the only way you can be abreast with what is going on in the country and try as much as you can to make your amends if you are going astray. But you have a president that is already cased, and the moment there is a dissenting voice, any dissenting voice, they say, "Oh, you are anti the government. You want to topple the government." Before the protest, they say, "You are anti the government. You want to topple the government." When you have such a government, I mean that cannot listen, is not open to advice. What do you expect? Such a government will definitely crash, will definitely fail. Because those in office, those lieutenants, will never do anything that will ensure their exit from power. They will never. So no minister will go and tell the that uh, the president that I'm not performing will remove me, or I want to resign. It's not done. It's an anomaly. Even when I resigned in River State, it was news. Oh, but what is wrong with you? Why will you resign? You know, how many ministers will do that? No minister will do that. And unless you have a personal feud with another minister, it is like scratch my back, I scratch your back. You know, now you have Mr. President who is even insulating himself from a minister. How can you tell uh, your minister to go to your chief of staff or go to your SLG if they want to see you? It is a sin. It is madness. Your ministers and special advisors will have unfettered access to you. Now you say they should go through uh, SLG, they should go through chief of, uh, uh, chief of staff. Okay, in other words, you are now telling them to be submissive to the SLG and the chief of staff. And if the SLG and the chief of staff have personal interest, the ministers will not, will not, they don't have a choice but to ensure that they do their bidding. They'll ensure that they do their bidding because for them to have access to you, they have to go through this, they, they, they become, suddenly become the bypass. And so we are not just talking of the interests of Mr. President. Huh? We are talking of the interests of the Chief of Staff. We are talking of the interests of the uh, uh, Senate uh, Government of Federation. That must be protected. If this government runs that way, why don't you isolate yourself from your ministers? If you are too weak to go, leave that place. We don't see you. You have me talk. Then you are now said you even your ministers to go through uh, SLG and uh, SPF and go through uh, what, what the Chief of Staff. It is not to start who is the chief of staff. It is actually not recognized. That is a military creation. You cannot subject a minister to a chief of staff. You cannot. You can do that. The what we know is actually the Pamsa government house or Pamsa state house or something. That is actually a military creation. Or is it because it is done in America? That is not what we are facing. Is the chief of staff in, 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 our, in our constitution? You say a minister should go to the chief of staff. Should go to the SGF. The SGF is actually a secretary to the government. To the government. He takes minutes, notes, and so on. We just glorify these characters. We just glorify them. They're actually secretary. It's like a company secretary. You take notes and so on. That's what you are. So why do you have to go to great uh, uh, you have to flounder in the morass of bureaucratic procedures? A minister will have to go through that to see. And you expect that that government will perform creditably. It's not possible. So your minister cannot talk to you directly. So if I go to the chief of staff now and say, I want to see the president, or for what reason? I tell you, say, no, I don't like this. If you don't agree with me on this, you are not going to see the president. Do you agree? The minister the, 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 the ministers are is unchristian. It's unchristian. That's the truth. So you don't need all these bureaucracies. And that is because we have a man who doesn't understand what governance is all about. 
That's just the truth. Okay. So are you saying that the poor performance of the ministers uh, is as a, that should be on it's the, the president? It's leadership, yes. It, yes, it's, it's, it's a function of the cataclysmic leadership of Mr. President. Okay. So, so which of these ministries should we pay attention to now? I mean, uh, we know that we have several ministries, but... I just mentioned, I just said, talked about two or three ministries that have performed uh, above average. So which means every other ministry should be taken under advisement. <laughs> How many ministries? I can't start mentioning all. So every other ministry. So every other ministry. Mr. Um, you tell me, mention one, mention one minister and, and let us see what they have, what that minister has done. I'll talk about what sports. What that minister has achieved. You, you can talk about talk sports, Sorry? you can talk, talk about you know, healthcare, you can talk, you know, uh, okay, power. I just mentioned health, so which one is healthcare? Or SARS now, or SARS, why are you being sarcastic? <laughs> I just mentioned, <laughs> I just mentioned health. There are this small failure in the health sector. So why are you mentioning health? Are we talking about sports? Well, uh, the only sport I really know, I play golf and I go. The next thing is I play chess, I play golf, that's all. I'm not a football fan. I've, I never played football in my life. And yeah. even if you are in the World Cup going on right now, I'll turn my TV to Africa Magic. Well, there's also the Minister Africa of Defense, um, uh, Bashar Magashi. Oh, please, don't go there. The man who said you should carry a gun and protect yourself without you having a license to carry that gun. Is that, is that the man you said is performing? The man who said Nigeria should defend is that not admission of failure? Oh, please don't talk of the Minister for Defense. Don't talk of the Minister, that monologue Minister for Defense. We are talking of digital approach, military approach. Don't talk of the Minister. The Minister of Defense is just a carbon copy of Mr. President. Carbon copy of Mr. President. That's, and that was why you They are just friends, so you appointed him. Not that he knows anything upstairs. He has failed abysmally. Is there any defense in this country? Eh? Where we have uh, um, protests, we have uh, separatist movement assuming apocalyptic dimensions and so on. What are we talking about? Our lives are endangered on a daily basis. So which defense? M monies we are located to uh, the former minister for the former chief of army or former service chief. The NSA himself admitted that the monies released to them we are not used for the same purpose. Yet they were made Ambassadors, the Minister for Defense admitted that much. Their successors admitted that much. That there is nothing to show for how much they have received. And they were made ambassadors. Are you talking of defense? No, please, don't talk of defense now. Don't talk of defense. We can glorify, we can commend the government for banditry and insurgency. We can commend the government for fertilizing the ground for banditry and insurgency. No doubt, we can do that. But to contain it, no, no, no. I mean, the government well, should be praised for the opposite and not for containing bandits and insurgents. You praise them for commenting. I mean, they are going, they are germinating it. Yeah. I like that. Well, well Mr. Ingo uh, I, I want you to... Um, um, the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, has also been one of the people who was, who was praised for having a very a reasonably good team. Um, he selected people based on competence, uh, regardless yes, of what part yes, of the country yes. that they came from, regardless of their political affiliations also. You know, there's many examples um, as to people who he appointed based on, you know, their level of competence that, and, you know, that, and trust that he had in them. Um, but I, I, I want you to compare, you know, that era with where we are today, you know, and why that has changed. And also, what exactly do they talk about when they attend Federal Executive Council meetings? you know, that the president chairs and sometimes the vice president. What, what are the conversations like um, if everyone, like you have mentioned, can see that there's really no performance? Thank you, Phil, that uh, you said if everyone, like I said, which means <laughs> uh, Nigerians are in tandem with my views. Well, having said that, you asked the question what they discuss at ESCO. Who sets the tone? It's Mr. President. Who sets the tone? And your level of contribution is consequent upon the permission of Mr. President. I was reliably informed that, especially on legal matters, whatever the Attorney General says, no matter how skewed and illegal 
the advice is, Mr. President will say, I agree with that. And that is all. And on few occasions, you have Fashola and the minister, and the vice president opposing him. They say, no, it is illegal, it is wrong. So it depends on Mr. President. If you allow the cross fertilization of ideas, I don't think those at the uh, ESCO, the Federal Executive Council, are all done. Even if 10 of them are going, or 15 or 20 of them, at least you are going to have another 15 or 10 that will oppose, and you come up with uh, policies that will be of national interest. But I, what is the problem? Like I said, you have Mr. President being controlled by Kabar. And so every other person is just there to complete the number. We might have an ESCO meeting. And already I can say, okay, fine, you know, I believe you're an ask student, so you know what they call the cognitive dissonance theory. We can have an ESCO meeting, and I say, okay, there is no problem. You, what is your view on you? You, what is your view on this? You, what is the... After expressing your views, I say, I think I agree with Mr. A, because I'm the man in charge. And I am agreeing with Mr. A not because I am convinced that Mr. A is saying the right thing or because Mr. A actually said the right thing. But I am agree with Mr. A because I believe that Mr. A is 100% loyal to me that he will be protecting my interest as against national interest. You see, that's the truth. And that's why most times when you have dissenting views, the first thing Mr. President will say are those that want to bring down my government. It is the most ridiculous statement any civilian president will say. We are not in a military regime. We are not in a military regime. So they decide to see the start plus behind every dissenting world and see dangerous enemies in the faintest shadows. That is just the problem we have in this, with this government. So you have an ESCO meeting because you must have an ESCO meeting. It's a constitutional requirement. The ESCO must approve the contracts. Otherwise, they are, those, those such contracts are illegal. So you must have an ESCO meeting. But most of them go into the ESCO meeting with predetermined, with a mindset. And you don't go into a meeting with a mindset. You go into a meeting prepared to submit yourself to superior arguments. That is the truth about it. But I don't think that is the case with the Federal Executive Council meeting. Has um, financing also been one of the challenges that ministers can say has, you know, held them back from performing? None has come to say finance apart from the Minister for Transportation, who has openly said it's actually a problem. But apart from him, no, nobody has come to say finance. Rather, they defend the ineptitude of the government. So I cannot say finance is the problem. And why would finance be the problem? This is the government that has borrowed more than any other government in the history of this country. And every other in the past, the governments were able to address most of these issues that are wearing their head now, that are almost uh, enveloping the country today negatively. Most of the governments in the past address these issues without borrowing half of what this government is. In fact, in, in the past governments even tried to pay off most of our debts. So, finance cannot be the problem. The problem will be. Mismanagement of our finances, mismanagement of our resources, which the president is also guilty of. He's always out of the country, even his medical toy alone. You have a president who has been in office for six and a half years and cannot turn around our health sector. It is a shame that up till now he's still traveling abroad for medical treatment. Chinibu just left the country and just got back for medical treatment. That is symptomatic of the poor medical state, uh, state of our health facilities. Six and a half years down the line. Doctors are striking. Doctors, the last time we had to leave en masse to Dubai, and they blocked it. It is not by blocking it. At the airport. It's a shame that six years after, the president will still spend our hard-earned resources, travel to the UK for medical treatment. Whereas you have the answer. when his wife raised the alarm that the Asheron Clinic is is empty and is being used as a conduit part, they slated her. She was criticized, castigated for making that statement. But six and a half years after, nothing has happened. Recently, they budgeted how much for the Asheron. Let us watch and see if that money will be spent 
on uh, 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 rehabilitating the Asura plane. So as the boss stops at Mr. President, because the president is corrupt, his followers are corrupt. There is no other, you know, people say, um, um, uh, Mr. President might not be corrupt, but the followers are corrupt. Ridiculous. It suffers from excess of reason and poverty of logic. Mr. President is corrupt, so the followers are corrupt. That's the truth. When the head is rotten, the tail will be rotten. So um, now that we still have, you know, a few more, uh, we still have a few more days. I would say the days, not that they're just uh, one or two, but we still have from now up until 2023. Do you think that anything about can be done? Do you think, think that anything can be done and what can be done practically, you know, to remedy the situation? Like Sinead, Sinead is trying to redeem his uh, image, battered image. I'm talking of the Federal Ministry of Lawmaking, National Assembly. Trying to uh, redeem his battered image, it has started responding to uh, the calls and uh, uh, cries of Nigerians. It has started with amending Section 52 of the Obnoxious Electoral Act. The presidency, in as much as the period, is so short. Really, really short, because uh, that is a, a wider scope. We are talking of the nation as a whole. But the presidency can start to give his image first by ensuring that all those that have been accused of financial fraud, irrespective of your party affiliation and inclination, you are prosecuted. Let him start with that. We have the Baba Shala. You know what they do? They initiate a court action. And then they employ the Fabian policy. They ensure that that court, that you have long adjournment and the processes will go on almost ad infinitum. But if you are an ordinary man, oh, it's a selected hearing and you're jailed. What has happened to the CCP chairman? That, that CCP chairman who displayed that madness in public. Why is he still in office? Why is he still in office? The president, the first thing we expected the president to do was to suspend him. You can't sack him. But you can't suspend him. That's what the president would have done. He did not. Because the man is doing his bidding. He's a hatchet man. So there are a lot, the whole government, the whole lot of things that the president must address if he has to redeem his image. From corruption to appointments, even the hyper issue, got assumed this uh, dimension because of the wrong handling by Mr. President. What Mr. President is doing in the South is he's not doing it enough. Are you going to talk of banditry, armed robbery, and so on, uh, uh, in the United States compared to the South? You treat the North with kid gloves and plead for amnesty, and in the South you say destroy them? Yes, I may not agree with their paradigm. I strongly disagree with their approach. But the truth about it is that the South is not having marginalized. I'm not a South Easterner. I'm a, I'm a pure South South man. Pure South, and I will never be a South Easterner. I will never be a member of Biafra. You know, the kind is mad to say we are part of Biafra. Is that madness? He needs to have the exam. I can never be a member of Biafra. But the truth is, they have been marginalized. And that marginalization is uh, accentuated more under this present administration. So the president needs to address a whole lot of this injustice. You have more equal segregation and change discrimination in the system. We, the president, must address, even in terms of appointments. And until these issues are addressed, peace remains a fleeting illusion. He has, a, he has about 500 days of thereabouts in office. I doubt that the president I know can affect the desired change Nigerians want. Well, Mr. Nkotara, the, these are, um, I don't know if you would agree that these are some of the effects of having um, uh, political appointments based, uh, not based on competence, um, and of course a CV that speaks for you, but instead based on the need to settle uh, political, you know, friends um, and put people in government that well, maybe yeah, some you know, I've said it, that what we are encouraging in this country is mediocrity and men, not meritocracy. Yeah, so, so how can we, how can we end to that? Be a member, for you to be a member of the House of Assembly, a member of the House of Assembly has nothing to do with Assembly and those robber stamps. You must be a top. And the way they compensate you is you can take the be a member of the House of Assembly. When you see House of Assembly members, they are like charlatans. Charlatans.
accounts, the way they dress, the way they talk. Tell me, I mean, apart from just I mean, as an assembly member, as close to their state governors. You mention it. I mean, if the speaker dies in the next minute, he's gone. He's gone. So, forget it. Are you talking about national assembly? We know of somebody who is a principal officer in the national assembly because of what he did with the means. He invaded the national assembly. We are all aware of that. We know what it is. We have the national assembly, the president of the national assembly, who said they are not here to oppose the president. That they work hand in hand with the president. Is that what a leader of the national assembly, the president of the national assembly, and say to say? So you find out that all they do is look. If we are sure you met, what will I get? Don't worry, I'll make you this so that you protect me. What is the problem? What was the problem of um, um, the former senior president who was the governor? What was his name again? Who the hell was the president? Because they didn't want you to emerge. Knowing too well he did a strong character, he emerged, and that was the genesis of the public. That was how he provenanced his public. But then what, what is it? Why should anybody be the president be interested who is going to emerge as a senior person, if not for control? And that's what is happening. So you have square pairs around holes. Unfortunately, there is nothing you can do because they are the money bags. So what we need to do right now as Nigerians is take the money and put your conscience. And that's why we are happy with the electronic transmission of law. Although we or without the passage, because to me, it's one legislative excursion. Because INEC has a right to decide because we have power INEC. And so for you to deny INEC that right, you must have first of all amend that constitution. They failed to amend the constitution, but amending the electoral act, which is inferior to the constitution. So, it's, but it's okay. Thank God they are vaccinated. It's okay. But the truth about it is that let us take this money because of the poverty in the land. There is hunger. Hunger is palpable and pervasive. Let's take this money and vote our conscience and ensure that the right people are like Nigerians should no longer abstain because you've been abundantly hurting yourself. Because when they get into office, it's for another four years. They make more money to Ellen Gates, so to remain. You will just be crying and crying and crying and nothing. It's like batting on a sticky wicket. Nothing will come out of it. So I will enjoy Nigeria to collect this money and vote, since it's a secret, in vote their conscience and ensure that those you trust are the ones elected. If they go in and disappoint you, it's a different ballgame altogether. That's the only way we can affect the change. Well, th th that's also... And that's the only way we can kick out all this money back with distorted perception of life that accidentally discharged under the political surface. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a different discussion, you know, but I will mention that, you know, that also fails because, you know, you are only going to vote from the options available. And if the options available are one and the same, then you really aren't left with the opportunity to vote who you believe my, will affect change. My, my, my brother... I agree with you, sir. What you have to say, the responsibility next to on our shoulders to to think, devise a means. Because you just said what you said is right, is apt. Because you can only choose from what is available, and those that are available are the ones that are responsible for the problems today. But you see how complicated, how convoluted it is. So what do we do? What do we do? Uh, Mr. Ingo Tari, I think there's a way out. Yeah. Ms. I think there's a way out. Mr. Ingo Tari, I remember... Yeah. Like, like, like the Jiggers and Co. Like the Jiggers and Co. If they are serious, there will definitely, definitely be a way out. There will definitely well, be a way out. It will be a lot of work. Mr. Ingo Tari, I'm sure you also remember how long it took, you know, and clamoring that it took from Nigerians before the service chiefs were eventually replaced uh, by President Mohamed Abouari. It took It took a while of Nigerians continuing to, you know, clamor and beg and plead um, for these changes to be made. Um, is there a way that Nigerians should be able to reach out to the president uh, to let him know that certain ministers have failed, his minister for education or for health or, or defense or whichever? Is there ways that the president can be able to listen or be, be made to listen to the, the voices of Nigerians? There is no other way. You have uh, a president with a mindset. They must have told him that these are people sponsored 
to discredit your government. He said it now. He said it. Yes. Otherwise, how are you going to tell the president when not went on strike? Uh, as you on strike, uh, your minister has been negotiating. If you are not seized of this situation, then you must be dead. Then you are, I mean, I mean dead, physically dead. Because you are in Nigeria, not went on strike. Asu, epileptic, up and on. Uh, 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 the going on strike now. Protest, left, right, and center. You are aware, because you are the one issuing the order to the military to go and clamp down on these protesters. It is only the Mr. President that can issue such an order, going by the Constitution. So, if you are not aware, and you order people to go, won't you ask the question, what are, why are they protesting? Why is not going on strike? Because the minister, it, no matter what happens, cannot agree which truth or accommodation with not, what I mean, I mean, national as well, resident doctors, with not, without clearing with the president, because it's the president that will have give the approval for any agreement. So, are you going to say it's not that way? It's just intellectually myopic. That's just the truth. Let's call his state his state. Intellectually myopic. He's not intellectually competent to rule a country like Nigeria. This is no military regime. Even as a military man, he failed. It is now clearly obvious that the man who was in charge was Idiyan. Not it. It was Idiyan. Otherwise, how do you explain it? So how, how do you want Nigeria to do? To kill themselves? We killed ourselves. People die. Every protest, people die. So how, what, what else do you want Nigeria to do? That's the only way. You can't have access to him. He does not, he's not even interested in him. He doesn't talk to you. So the only way is to protest, and would they protest on the streets of Abuja? How else do you want them to express their disapproval of a system? And whenever they protest, you send the soldiers out. Whenever they protest, you send the soldiers out. You say, oh, there are people trying to discredit your government. How do you oh, I remember once when he said, oh, uh, they are lucky that this is not a military regime. I would have tolerated this. How will a civilian president say that on earth? So are you, are you saying... Tell his are you saying that this is actually a hopeless situation and that uh, Nigerians should just, uh, you know, just... It is hopeless fall? under General Buhari. It is hopeless under General Buhari. Yes. I, look, I bet you nothing will change. So are you saying that Nigerians should just days. fold their arms and wait for 2023? Uh, you we will continue to protest. What are we going to do? We will continue to protest. But can't you see that the 10 years mediation with the encasement is, has never been this threatening in the history of this country? Never been this threatened. If this will tell you, this will get the need for any proof that it is the worst government we have. And have we ever talked of secession? Have we been louder before the history of this country? Not even under Biafra, the Biafra said, we were I wasn't born there. Which is part of the problem today. Because the Southeasterners have never been reintegrated into the system after the Biafra war. Let us face that. They've never. They've all been segregated again, which is very wrong. Very wrong. So if you think you're going to get a change on that Buhari, you must have a rethink. It's a fleeting illusion, my dear. Because you came with a mindset. A man who's talking about amnesty for criminals. Not bothering about those they have murdered. Is he the same person you want to do? How, what kind of change are you talking about? A man who's romancing with Gumi. Is the hand of Asa and the voice of the Don't you know that? I said it on this very station. When Gumu was talking, I said, Gumu is not, is not alone. And today they are talking of amnesty. What are we talking about? So my dear, forget all this. How I, I many, the ambassadors, uh, what is the name of our of ambassadors, after stealing looting, confirmed by the NSA, his own NSA. And there are and, and they are, and they are some, uh, uh, what are they, what are they called? Those who take over from you, what are, what are they called? Asad, help me now. We'll take over from Buhari. Successors. 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 Yes, well, yeah. I mean, those who take over, yes, and they're successors. Confirm it. And they are not the ambassadors. What are we talking about? Who can Magu, your GSF discredited Magu? I don't have been vindicated. I don't have been vindicated. So, what change are you talking about? From who? You can't be quit what you don't have. 
you can only give back what you have, not what you don't have. He doesn't have it. He's lacking in that. He doesn't have it. So don't expect anything. After six hundred, do you learn all that in your left hand? Uh, well. can't stand it. So it's too late. Yeah. We are going to manage it. We will manage it on the twenty twenty three. <laughs> Ms. Engotara, I, I, I asked about something earlier, you know, a comparison between, you know, the former president, Olusegun Obasanjo's time and um, what he did, you know, while selecting his own cabinet and people that, um, you know, ran, you know, government for him at, at that time. Um, I want you to, you know, you know, help us understand what we must do in order to place someone in 2023 who would also understand the importance of selecting a very, very competent cabinet. Um, not waiting six months, you know, either to put in those persons, but already having an idea of the level of, of competence that should make up their cabinet. <laughs> mm. I, I mean, how we are going to get somebody that will appreciate competence. Yeah, the, the importance of that, you know, and, and how that message can be yeah. spread across the country, you know, as we approach the elections. Okay. Okay. My dear brother of us, I refer to this as a jam question. Because, like you rightly said, we are going to choose from the same pool. And most of these politicians today condemn the government in power because they are not in power. It will be very difficult when we have the likes of Peter Obi, if you have to go by antecedent. We have the likes of Peter Obi and a few others. But we all know that Peter Obi can never be the president of this country by virtue of where he comes from. I can tell you that. Not at least today. We have few others, but will they allow them? That's the problem. But if we run around, just like what happened when Peter B was to emerge, Peter B was just a banker, and a group of people came and forced him. He was practically coerced into accepting it. And I and that people have no regret for it. Although the only thing I condemned was the issue of not conducting local government elections. He never conducted local government elections as state government, which is very reprehensible. There is no justification whatsoever for that. But apart from that, they already said yes, they performed well. You have a few of them. And of course, I can assure you that some of us are going to rally around them. We are going to look at your antecedents as a former governor, if you've never been a governor, as a commissioner, I don't think we need to credit you because your performance is dependent upon your governor, your principal. But as a former governor, as a senator, where you have the free hand and free will to do what you want to do, we will pick from some of them and back them. But whether they will succeed or not is a different thing altogether. Because there are plans to rig the election. And that's why a lot of people we have vast to electronic transmission, back for the pressure, because there are already plans to rig the election. So let us see what makes top parties will flow, because you need a financial muscle, you need a cloud. And if you say, for example, you have the YPP, it's hypothetical, or the ADP, you might have credible people there, but they don't have the financial muscle, they don't have the cloud. What are they going to do? That's why I said we have to plead with Nigerians to get the money from this money back and vote our conscience. Let it be that at the end of the day, our conscience failed us. And not tomorrow we keep blaming ourselves, putting our, uh, 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 planting our actions on the now stupid excuses of hunger, gastric reasons, money, politics, and so on. Because we are not only worsening our situation. Yes. If we endure and get the right people elected into office, 
our sufferings will end at this will be, it will be in sight. The end will be in sight. We now know that for three, four years, these people are going to reshape our economy that will be in the interest of all. And not collect one naira that will just buy us bell and fish, and after that will become slaves for another eight years because they have the money to continue after the first time. All right, so go time. the only way out is awareness, create that awareness, education, enlighten Nigerians. Look, collect the money from these money bags. We, are, we all come from a community. We all come from a society. We know who is who. Get this money from these money bags and vote your conscience. That's the only way we can affect this thing. All right. Um, Opunabo Inkotaria, former media aide to River State Governor. Thank you so much. Um, I always enjoy your uh, thoughts Thank and you, conversations sir. with you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, and we wish you a very beautiful Wednesday ahead. Thank you, sir. What's my sister's name? My name is Messi. Thank you so much for joining us today. Nancy. Messi. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. All right. And this is where we, of course, will be wrapping up the program this morning. Thanks for joining us and, of course, uh, having our um, breakfast with us here on Plus TV Africa. If you missed out on any of our conversations this morning, remember where to catch up. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And, of course, our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Yu Ogbawa. And I am Messi Ibupu.